analyst desk. Thank you very much, guys. Elements uh, still have their playoffs hopes alive. They have to go 2-0. and oh. And we saw a lot of smiling faces there from Elements after the game. But to be honest, a lot to smile about in the first 20, 25 minutes. But then some serious question marks. Yeah, serious question marks. And again, it's Giants that are the ones that are bringing them up. You saw Pepinero just shaking at the end. The adrenaline just flowing through his body because he nearly won that game. It was close. It was kind of a four versus one base race, which the four should always win. But that was a lot closer than Elements ever should have let it go. Yeah, how does it get to that point after? Or maybe first let's analyze the early game from Elements and maybe their picks coming in. We saw Trundle, so Wicked maybe being pushed to the edges of his champion pool, but he did make it work. Frogan was racking up a lot of kills and Crepo on Thresh. He tweeted out that he was really beaten down after that loss last week. And I think Crepo is the kind of a player that when you hit that hook and you get that first blood early, you hear the crowd a little bit through your headphones. That must make him seriously amped up. Yeah, you could see him in the player camera. The energy just went straight to him. And he hit hook after hook in team fights, out of team fights. Some team fights he was hitting three in the same <laughs> duration because he had uh, extra cooldown. So just made sure he could throw out hooks even more often. But what Elements really did well in the early game was controlling the the pressure that uh, the Giants should have been outputting. When you pick a Twisted Fate in a lineup, you're basically saying, I'm giving away all of the pressure on my own lane, but I'm going to use the Destiny uh, to get across the lane and affect other lanes and get the rest of my team fed. And that's a little bit problematic when you're a team like Giants who rely on Pepinero a lot in their team composition. That got a little bit exploited with uh, you know the way they started the game for Elements. It was a little bit greedy out of Frederick for Giants. He started Grump, then did blue buff, uh, and got invaded by Crepo, which is a little greedy. If you start on the side with the enemy duo lane, you tend to just take the buff, smite it, and get out of there, because otherwise, Crepo comes in and, and gets the first blood. <laughs> yeah, that early game didn't work out that well for the Giants, but yet again, they managed to force something when it's later in the game. Flashback, of course, to that game that they ended up winning versus Elements, and they have a Maokai with Teleport, a Rek'Sai with a Global Ultimate, and... Uh, twisted Fate. I feel like if they had a bit a bit better wave control, they could have even done a little bit more in that late game. Yeah, that was a really big problem for Giants as they played through this game. When you have essentially three global champion uh, champions that can affect the, the whole map, you want to be pushing in as many lanes as possible, and it's something that Giants just couldn't do. They were constantly using defensive uh, destinies out of Twisted Fate. A lot of the, the time when you're playing a Twisted Fate, you want to be kind of around the area where your Maokai is in the the next lane, the adjacent one, so that you can kind of help him out and then go and kill the Trundle before Trundle becomes too much of a problem. So mm -hmm. just the way they played the Twisted Fate in the early game didn't quite match up with what they needed to do uh, in that mid-game phase. However, let's give credit to Giants. They sorted that problem. They started getting Pepinero uh, into the fights, little skirmishes where Frog and one gold card and a Q blows him up, and that instantly gives them all of that pressure back on the map. Yeah, some hopeful signs. We did see them being quite sad after that game, of course, as they are still fighting to definitely not get auto-relegated. And in Elements, one last thing. Tomorrow, up against Fnatic, they have to go 2-0. and oh. Of course, Fnatic will have their buy locked in already, but I don't think Fnatic's the kind of team that'll be like, we're going to chill here. They're going to go just as hard. Yeah, you have to expect that. But at the same time, uh, it's the last week. And if the final week of Challenger told us anything, <laughs> coming into it, Team Dignitas Europe had to 2 0 Reason Gaming. We saw it happen. Nobody was really expecting Timo. it. We saw Timo. There's crazy things have happened and stranger things have happened in the LCS as well. So it's still all on the line. Fnatic can't hold up because Elements in the first 20 minutes showed what Elements should be able to do. Yeah, we will see what happens in that matchup tomorrow. As for us, we're just minutes away from our last match of the day between the Unicorns of Love and Gambit Gaming, who are locked up in the number four spot in the standings. But before our sneak peek into the postseason, we'll take an inside look at how this Blitz only two-time MVP went from being the best in his family to one of the best in in Europe. He was the place where my pro career started, playing tons and tons of team rank games. To I was playing with my big brother and his friends were showing him League of Legends. We kind of fell in love with League of Legends as well. And when we started playing it, we were just playing Normal games for fun with a lot of friends. First, love. Good job. I know. Normal games are just uh, fun, and uh, it's it's really cool that uh, our uncle is uh, playing the game as well. 
with my little brother, and so it's it's just uh, really cool to have um, fun and normal games from time to time. I think we got around 1k already normal games on our accounts, and we started to play ranked. We were like, we can do better, we can uh, achieve more. Nice. So we started playing, and I think we got quite fast to Diamond League. And we just created a ranked team with uh, solo queue players. We hit Challenger, but I played less because of university. And um, Tristan got um, offers to play for other teams. So I was playing a lot of di in different uh, Challenger series teams, and Unicorns of Love. So I was like, they improved a lot, I can try it out for them again. They are quite good and they were quite friendly in the atmosphere, so I just rejoined them. Petrifying gaze catches Bebevin the moment he jumps in. Power of evil. Insane. This is a guy along with the entire Unicorns of Love team that just seems to have some pizzazz when they play. You can't necessarily quantify how he's playing this well, but he just is, and it's great to see for such a young player. Power of Evil tries to put some damage in reply. It's in fact Kickers that goes down first. Yellowstar pulling the attention on the back line while Feverf and his steelback are being zoned away by the ghost of Christmas past. We did see Power of Evil get given the omen of death and the unicorns of love come out with a fantastic team fight. All of the other mid laners really respect him and we can see when he's doing well, unicorns of love as a team, they follow him and they do well. I mean, like, I was uh, very proud of him, and uh, it was um, funny. To, we always played together, and uh, now all of my friends uh, and Tristan's friends, they are all watching every game. And ich war sehr stolz auf den lieben Tristan, und wir haben quasi jedes Spiel verfolgt. They're really supportive. They were supporting me since the start, and they cheer me up when I lose as well, or try to help me to improve as well. So it's quite good. Was hast du gedacht, wenn ich ähm, besser wurde bei einem Spiel und dann auch ähm, quasi jetzt erst gekommen bin? Was hast du dir dann gedacht? Besser wurde Ich habe mich gefreut einfach und, hab, und hoffe, dass du auch weiterkommst und dass du auch in die Weltmeisterschaft kommst. Welcome back to the EULC.